I don't think we're going to go to an area where, because we don't have that inflationary pressure, as she just mentioned, that you're going to get choked off. But what you have to be careful about is do other things across the world really affect us? Even though we are our own island here, we are affected globally by other things. But given kind of what we've seen, we're in the bullish camp. And I think we still have a few more innings left here. The question is, we don't know when, as anyone does. Say, are there any red flags at the end of that? Or what would make you say, Ugh. You know, the credit markets would be the biggest red flag for us. And we're watching those. We haven't really seen anything. You haven't seen spreads really widen out. Credit really isn't that easily available. Um, you are seeing companies that are over leveraged get hurt in the equity it's market. Just, it's never been made clear to me, Santoli, whether it's the absolute level of interest rates or whether it's just moving a 100% from a low level. How fast they go up, yeah. Because don't you use a discounted model of, of what, when you deploy capital into a, into a, uh, a company, yeah. it, you expect this return. And for a bond or for an interest rate to, to, to exceed your expected return, I thought it had the discounted model means it has to be like 10% or something. How, I, could, I, how could 4% be more attractive than giving your money to companies to try to... No, uh, I mean, I don't it. think it would be the absolute what level, about but five? it would be the, what about real, the real yields, the real right. interest rates. In other words, above the level of inflation, which, by the way, they're basically... Real yields are near zero right now. Does it have to be? Does the yield have to get more attractive than what stocks are over time? About, I don't think it's about on the investor side. I don't think it's about the providers of capital. I think it's about the consumers of capital and how stocks are valued right now relative to the level of corporate debt costs and cost of equity. I mean, so that to me is the main calculation. Ba based I, on that valuation, where we're okay we're, right yeah, now, but you saw in February that you stretched it. Right. right. You, you basically got to the most expensive level for stocks relative to where bonds were when we got to 3 percent on Treasury yields and then, of course, a margin and, above that. And, for and to Mike's years. point, it's how fast you get there. I, I think we can handle higher long term rates if they're real rates, because they're actually, that's actually beneficial for the whole economy. You have pricing power, you have wages going up. But if you get that really quickly and really fast, it's the snap. It's the snap and it's the allocation shifts that happen on the institutional but side. But it's also the companies that basically get knocked out of the market along the way when right. when corporate costs go up. Right, Be because the markets freeze up. And what's up. happening in the rest of the world? Is the dollar going way up? Is the, you, know. you get the unintended consequences. So it's a question of if you can do it slow and steady, mm -hmm. it's okay. And I think that's the right way to do it. We do need rates to go up over time. You just can't get there really fast. But the problem is nobody can control that. So, Linda, we, we, uh, I think the fiscal year is over in September, and we're going to do like $900 billion. So you might as well. I mean, we're at trillion-dollar deficit levels. Does that – how do you see that? We're gonna, will, the, will an improved economy – bring those down in, in future years, or do we need to, to do something with the spending side of things? Well, you know, I always say that whether or not trickle-down economics works depends on what side of the aisle you're on. We really need to see what happens over time here. And I agree with what the gentleman said. You know, this is going to be the longest bull run in history. In a year, it'll be the longest economic recovery in history. Why does that make sense? Because we didn't have a boom. And without a boom, you don't get a bust. And people are always trying to figure out when the next cyclical bear will occur. We are in a long-term secular bull market. Secular bulls can last for up to 20 years. You get about three of them in your lifetime. One when you're too young, you have no money. One when you're old, you're about to die. And the one we're in right now, and I always say, why can't we just enjoy this?